A trigger is an invisible collision box that will fire an event when entered. They are often used in games for things such as starting a boss fight or cutscene, or killing the player or damaging them if they fall on spikes or other hazards. We already have some collision detection, but we'll need to make some changes for triggers. Currently, our static bodies always repel regular bodies, and our regular bodies are affected by gravity. We need triggers to stay in one spot and to not be affected by gravity or static bodies. For that, we'll add a simple flag, is kinematic, to our body struct. And we'll also add an is active flag so we can reuse our inactive bodies. We'll update the create function to accept an is kinematic boolean. There's quite a few changes we need to make in the physics C file to pull this off. We want triggers to fire no matter the velocity of the object triggering them, so we'll need to update the sweep result function. This function was designed to be agnostic of which type of body is passed in. However, we want to call the onHit function if there's a hit. To do that, we'll need to split it out into two functions and use each type explicitly, one for static and one for regular bodies. There are a number of ways we could have done this, including a sort of polymorphism that you can do in C. I'll leave a link to that in the cards. But we went with this more simple way of just splitting it into two functions. Down in the stationary response function, we want to call any onHit events as well. We'll just use the same logic as the static bodies, but we don't need the penetration vector. Down in physics update, we want to add a check to skip any inactive bodies, as well as one for kinematic bodies. We don't want to add gravity to those ones. In the create body function, we'll update it to reuse inactive bodies. Over in the entity header, we're going to update our entity create function to take an is kinematic flag that will be set on the body. In entity.c, we'll update the create function to take the kinematic flag as well as use inactive entities. All right, heading into main.c, we're going to need some constants speed and health for large and small entities. And that's it. Now further down, we're going to change our on hit static callback for our enemies and we'll create a small and large version. Next, we'll create the callback function for our trigger. We'll call it uh, fire on hit because eventually it'll look like some flames that enemies fall into. For this one, we'll just check to make sure that the colliding entity is an enemy. Then we'll set the is active flag to false on the body and the entity. Now we need a new mask for the fire as it collides with enemies and the player but not the terrain and we don't have a mask for anything like that yet. Update the player create function to pass in false for the is kinematic flag. Create an entity for the fire using the fire mask and on hit callback. Next, we'll need a variable to keep track of our spawns. We'll be spawning enemies that walk into our fire to test our object pools are working properly and that our triggers are working properly. We want to spawn enemies when the spawn timer has reached zero and then reset the timer to a random value. We'll spawn numerous enemies at once to make sure everything is working fine. 100 seems fine and within the scope of this game. So let's use that. I will note that I did try a value of 4,000 and that froze, so... I guess there's a lot of efficiency gains that could be done with this system. And lastly, we want to render our entities. We'll just render alive entities as turquoise and dead enemies as red. Delete these other render calls as we don't need them. I actually went back into the spawning code and added a little bit of variability so that you can see all of the different entities spawning. And we're done. We now have a way to create triggers that can call arbitrary code when collided with. Join me in the next episode where we'll be implementing sound, but for real this time.